systems coming right towards Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma. The first one coming tonight with some severe storms possible, although I think most of us will just get a very heavy rain. You know, good downpours, rumbles of thunder, that sort of thing. And there could be a few severe storms here and there overnight tonight. That's going to be followed by colder air and the chance for ice across Arkansas, mainly northwest Arkansas and into the mountains. The River Valley. Central Arkansas the ice threats are a lot lower. We'll see if this track changes, but for now it looks like the heaviest ice will go from eastern Oklahoma right into northwest and then stretching east towards uh, Missouri and parts of Illinois. And then after that, we've got maybe a couple snow showers, rain showers this weekend too. So there's a lot to break down. We're going to be live here on YouTube on our digital platforms. So that's including our app, our website, on Facebook too. If you want to submit some questions, we'll be taking a look at those and we'll try to answer them the best we can. Every evening this week, we're going to be taking a look at this storm as it comes on in, especially this winter storm. Now tonight we've got a couple severe storms trying to push on through. Uh, they're right now in western Texas, western Oklahoma, so we'll take a closer look at those. We'll break those down. We'll talk about timing, kind of impacts what you can expect, and then that cooler air that's going to come in. There's a lot to talk about. So you want to go ahead and buckle up because we're going to be detailing a lot of different things. I'm going to step off to the side. We're getting a couple platforms ready. I hope you guys had a great Monday. Uh, we had some sunshine to start the day, but then those clouds really raced in. And it's been breezy, too. Even with the clouds, we still were able to get to some 70s, especially throughout the River Valley. We got close to northwest Arkansas. We got to those mid to upper 60s. Uh, but we are tracking some crazy weather this week, so hold on. February is trying to end, but my goodness, we started February with that snowstorm, and then... We've had a couple little systems here and there, but then uh, this week, last full week of February and winter is back in a big way. All right, if you have the 5 News app, you're going to get uh, push notifications, going to buzz, going to vibrate there a little bit. All right, let's jump into things. So, of course, we've got the ice coming up later this week, but let's go chronologically. What can we expect this week? This map is busy, but hey. The weather's busy too, so let's talk about what we're seeing on the map. The white arrows show you the jet stream. That jet stream, you go north of it, you got really cold air. You go south of it, we got the warmer air, but look where it is right now. It's right over Oklahoma and Arkansas. What happens is these, uh, these jet streams really carry storm systems. So we got this low pressure that's riding close to the jet stream, and we'll have more of these low pressures just spinning out and coming right in here to the central plains. If we zoom in a little bit closer, here's Arkansas. Oklahoma. Notice we've got some good downpours right now, right over the Red River, North Texas, Southern Oklahoma. I'll be honest though, they are struggling quite a bit. They're not as impressive uh, at this moment. There's a lot of clouds that they're running into. Also, there's a lot of water with these thunderstorms. When storms get waterlogged, they start to reduce their severe threats and the flash flooding threat starts to go up. We do have a flood watch in effect for Western Arkansas and parts of Eastern Oklahoma. But right now, some of that heaviest rain is just south of Moore, just south of Oklahoma City. It'll be riding close to the state line by about 10, 11 o'clock tonight. So it's going to get a lot wetter and, and louder here in Western Arkansas and Eastern Oklahoma here very soon. This yellow line, that's a dry line. We've got very dry, bone dry air conditions right now in parts of the Panhandle, Texas, Panhandle of Oklahoma, and these are just producing these storms. But notice how they start to ride over the same location. So look at this storm that just passed the Red River. You go right behind it. We've got more downpours. You go behind that, more downpours and more downpours. You can see where we're going. Well, what happens is once you get this rain to really funnel in a line, it really reduces the severe threats. We're watching the kind of the outer edge of this whole you know, conglomerate of rain, the outer edge right here in the front, that's where the, we would have the severe threats. Notice how they're a little bit more impressive. You got the darker reds, uh, maybe even a stray, uh, stray severe thunderstorm warning can possible, some gusty winds, maybe some hail too. But we'll watch this leading edge come in around 10, 11 o'clock tonight. And then on the backside, I think it's just heavy rain. But don't dismiss the heavy rain. There's going to be some good downpours later tonight. Might be trash night tonight. Make sure you hunker down the trash can. It's probably going to get kind of windy too, so just keep that in mind. But rain's now crossing the Red River into Oklahoma. Here we are right here in Fort Smith, Fayetteville. We've got the rain coming in here shortly. We had some of the clear skies earlier this morning, but the clouds have really thickened up uh, overnight this uh, tonight and then into tomorrow. We'll still have probably some clouds. Right now we're dry, but you see those showers. Here's about Lake Eufaula. They're still about 40 miles west of Lake Eufaula, so they'll be coming in here shortly, but we're quiet at the moment. But with that rain, that's going to be the highest threat, not necessarily the wind or hail or 
technically an isolated tornado threat. There, are, there is rotation in the atmosphere. It's just they're really waterlogged. That's good for us, but not good if you're in terms of, of flooding. If you've got an area that's prone to flooding, watch out one to three inches, likely just tonight. That's a lot of water in what, six to eight hours, especially if some of these storms train over the same locations. I think most of us will get around an inch, but a few of us here in the green colors, we could get two, maybe even up to three inches. LaFleur County, Sequoia County, even Adair County, we've got that threat. And then parts of the River Valley, Crawford County, Franklin County, Johnson County, Sebastian County, we're in that one to three. And in the northwest Arkansas, it includes Washington County, Madison County, and Carroll County. On top of that, we've got a winter storm watch that's in effect pretty much area wide. Northwest Arkansas, most of the river valley. You go south of the Arkansas River towards Logan County and Scott County. We're not in a watch right now. What's going to happen is we're watching another storm system come in Wednesday, Thursday. That's going to bring a freezing rain threat. However, most of it's probably going to take place in the mountains and in northwest Arkansas and then in eastern Oklahoma and then right along the Arkansas River and north of the river about I-40, Arkansas River, northbound. We've got the best threat for some of that ice. There's going to be a big difference between Southern Sebastian County and Northern Sebastian County too. Fort Smith probably going to get a little bit more ice than we would uh, per se in Mansfield, Greenwood and Hackett. All right, let's talk about the timing of everything. Once again, if you're just tuning in, you can submit a comment. Let us know what questions you have about timing, impacts, all that good stuff. We're walking through kind of chronologically. We've talked about the storms that are coming in tonight. Heavy rain likely, several probably rumbles of thunder. Very few of us could try to get a couple pockets of hail and maybe some gusty winds. It's going to get breezy at times. There is an isolated tornado threat, but it's low. But notice the timing. By the time we get to tomorrow morning, right around sunrise, the rain starts to dissipate. It should be a lot lighter after about 7 or 8. Until about 7 or 8, though, we could have some heavy rain pushing through. That rain pretty much ends by noon. The rest of your Tuesday looks dry. I'm not quite sure how much will break up the clouds, to be honest. We may get to partly cloudy skies, but I don't think we're going to get rid of all the clouds. We've got another storm system coming in quickly, so there's not a lot of time to get back to clear skies before another storm moves on in. It's that second storm that a lot of folks are talking about. We've got the winter threats, mainly north. You go north from the mountains into northwest Arkansas, we've got ice on the way and then mainly south of I-40, it's probably going to be a lot of rain. Now, there could be some slick spots, but this is really a mountains and northwest Arkansas event. That's good news for us in the River Valley, just rain, uh, but it could get slick towards the north. And then as we wrap this whole thing up, this is Thursday. Notice how the ice starts all the way Wednesday midday through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. By Thursday at lunch, most of the ice should be about over, but there could be a few flurries flying around, not a big deal, probably won't cause any impact, just a couple snowflakes in the air. And then we're finally done, except it could be a small little system coming up on Saturday. A couple days out, we're, we're not really worried about the one at the moment, but we'll talk about that in the seven day. Right now we're sitting in the 50s and 60s, pretty much 60s area wide. I'm kind of far away from that. 61 in Clarksville, 67 right now in Fort Smith. We hit some low 70s earlier today. In Northwest, we still have that southerly wind. We're right in those mid 60s along I-49 from Fayetteville to Springdale, Bentonville, Bella Vista. You had Western Benton County, Salm Springs. We're at 63, 63 right now reporting in Tawnytown too. In the River Valley, a lot of 60s, too. We've got this bubble of warmth right around Fort Smith, Van Buren. You head north and west. We're back down to 63 in South Saw, Poto, 61 right now in Clarksville. Where do we go from here, though? Yes, we're in the 60s, and we're not going to cool down all that much. That rain coming in uh, shouldn't be a too big of a deal. And this is one reason why we're not expecting the biggest severe weather outbreak. Temperatures are just not warm enough overnight. We're in the 60s. We've got some 50s. You really need to be at least 60 to get severe weather but we're just talking about minimums uh, here. So we're talking about low level severe threat, late tonight, this is midnight, MID midnight, got that chance for rain and thunder. And then over time, as we get towards tomorrow morning, eventually the rain chances will start to reduce. I'm kind of standing behind the, in front of the 70, but temperatures will slowly start to cool down a little bit too. In the River Valley, we'll hold on to the low to mid 60s pretty much all night tonight. Heaviest rain coming in right at midnight, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. And then by sunrise, we start to wrap things up and everything pushes out. But we are under level two severe threat. This is coming in from the Storm Prediction Center. The yellow shows you that level two all the way from North Texas, where they're already getting some of that rain now, stretching into Oklahoma and Arkansas. But remember, there's not a lot going on. There's heavy rain, but the storm 
are right now not firing up too, too great. That's good news, but right now it's just a lot of heavy rain coming in across the Red River. We'll see if anything changes, but I, I tell you what, I think most of us are just going to get that heavy rain since night's not a big night. We're going to keep our eyes on it. Well, your weather team's here for you overnight tonight. We're not going to sleep, but we'll be watching the threat. Maybe a couple little storms that try to get a little angry and get a little bit of hail and wind pockets with them too, but we're under that level two severe threat. So you just got to keep your eyes out. Most of us may hear some rumble thunder uh, later tonight, may wake us up. The highest threat though will be that wind and the flash flooding threat. There's a lot of rain with these, so be on lookout for that. We are under flood watch pretty much area wide. And then the tornado and hail threat are a lot lower. They're not zero, but they are pretty low. I think that's good for news for us. Here's a look at future cast tonight. Rain will start to push in. This is 11 o'clock. Those downpours coming in from North Texas will finally arrive. Heavy downpours though too. Localized flash flooding could be possible at times, but they'll move on in. And then once that initial wave pushes out, the severe threats will really start to go down. And it's just heavy rain band after heavy rain band. This is now three o'clock tomorrow morning, early in the morning, four or up. 5, 6 a.m. Once we're starting to wake up, the heavy downpour should start to clear. Most of the heaviest rain may be done by that morning commute. Let's say that's 7 o'clock in the morning. Most of them should be done in terms of the pouring rain, but there will probably be some scattered showers as you're still headed out the door. But things are going to be soaked as you're headed out tomorrow morning, and then we'll wrap up things and dry things out the rest of the day. All right, let's talk about the ice threats later this week. Wednesday, Thursday, winter storm coming in. What can we expect? Well, in terms of ice, I tell you what, ice is the hardest thing to forecast, where the heaviest ice is going to be. It also is dictated by how fast the freezing rain is falling. Then we got this. Let's say temperatures are at 26 degrees, well below freezing, but we're still getting fro you know, those raindrops coming in as freezing rain. Well, if they're falling too quickly, if you add too much water, you're not going to freeze it. Imagine putting uh, put in the ice cube tray, right? You only put a couple drops. Those will freeze pretty quickly. You put the whole thing, it's going to take longer to freeze. You fill it all up with a bunch of water. Same thing works in the atmosphere. Things are too heavy. We'll have to see. But for now, we're thinking about a half inch of ice may accumulate in northwest Arkansas. This is going to be a lot worse in northwest than likely it's going to be in the river valley. When we get about a half inch of ice and then combine that with just a 10 mile per hour wind, it's not too breezy. Usually we get impacts of scattered power outages one to two days. Roads will become slick, especially the elevated surfaces. You know, bridges, overpasses, of course, included with that too. But any kind of elevated surface, your mailbox, gutters, your vehicle, that'll ice first. That'll probably get a lot of ice. The roads, though, eventually will start to ice a little bit, and they may become slick. Bridges, of course, more dangerous than just roads that are against the ground. Uh, but power outages could be possible. In the River Valley, we're lower here on the scale. We've made this scale based on what we've seen in the past. Remember 2000? It's hard not to, right? In Fort Smith and Buren and Clarksville, we picked up so much ice. We picked up between about a one and a half inches to two inches of ice, and remember what that did, but we're way down the scale, down to here to a tenth. There could be some power outages, but they're not as likely. Most of us should be okay in the River Valley, I think. Now, of course, if things move south, we'll have to talk about a different story, but for now, it doesn't look like power outages are a big deal, but there could be some roads and bridges that do become slick. I have to think about 540, those bridges on even I-40 itself too. And then some of the county roads, if they've got bridges, you got to be on the lookout. But just about a tenth of an inch of ice, it's going to be a lot higher in northwest. Remember 2009, northwest? Yeah, that was crazy, right? We had about two inches of ice pretty much area-wide, an inch and a half to two inches. We're going to be down here towards a half inch. If this increases, more power outages will be possible. A lot of us were up power for seven, ten days. Let me know how much, how many power outages you had or or how long the power was out in Northwest. Let me also know how many power outages or how long the power was out in the River Valley you know, back in 2000. It's hard not to forget some of these storms, but we're down here a little bit on the scale, about a half inch as possible. Snow, not this time, no. What's gonna happen is temperatures are, are cold enough at the ground, but this whole time the storm's coming in, there's a pocket of warm air. So what happens is from the cloud, you get a snowflake, but it hits this warm air pocket and it melts back to a raindrop but then we're below freezing here at the ground where we live and that raindrop refreezes, flash freezes once it hits contact. But we're not probably going to get rid of that bubble of warm air above our heads. It's a couple thousand feet above. Since we can't get rid of that, we're, we're not going to be able to just keep the snowflake falling down. We're going to melt it every time. Now, if you go north and west, there'll be a chance for more snow in Missouri. But I think for most of us, this is more than ice threat. So they want to make that clear. More ice and sleet 
rather than a snow threat. However, when we're wrapping this whole system up, there could be a few flurries flying around in Northwest, maybe Benton County, Washington County, it wouldn't be much. We're still working on the forecast. I mean, it's Monday, and we're talking about Thursday night with that snow forecast, but we'll have to see. Here's a look at Futurecast. This is what a lot of folks have been waiting on. Once again, if you have some specific questions, go ahead and submit them. We'll take a look at those. We're just chatting with you guys. We're going to be doing these live streams every evening with you, talking about the latest updates. Here's the newest information coming in just after sunset. Futurecast is going to show more ice and wintry weather towards the north, more rain towards the south. Notice how by the time we get to Wednesday afternoon, midday, lunchtime, recess, that's when the freezing rain will move in. Notice our temperatures are well below freezing. That's a good freezing threat. Th those water droplets, as soon as they hit, things are going to melt and freeze pretty quickly. In the River Valley, we're right next to freezing, so we're going to have a mix of some ice and some just cold rain. The farther north you live, closer to the Boston Mountains in northern Crawford County, northern Franklin County, northern Johnson County, we could have some ice. And then also in eastern Oklahoma, we could get more ice too. But it's from really from about Greenwood, Mansfield, south to Boonville, Paris, and even Waldron, not much ice. Mount Matt Magazine in Paris, you'll probably get ice higher up there, but in the town of Paris, probably not much. And this is going to continue. As we go towards 7 o'clock Wednesday, just after sunset, ice continues in northwest, and then we start to dry things out a little bit towards the west. But then guess what? Another storm system comes in. It's going to be hard to distinguish between the two. There's actually two low pressures moving through. But for some of us, there's not going to be really much of change. But just know there's two low pressures. And so the intensity is going to go back up Thursday morning once we're up and then be really intense Thursday midday. We may be just a touch warmer. This storm system coming in, the second one, may track a little bit farther north. And that's why you see the ice rain line going back north. So we'll have to see how that kind of plays out. That would keep the ice threats mainly in Benton County and Carroll County. Uh, but things are going to change the next couple of days. But I really think that's mainly just going to be a cold rain in the River Valley. All right, next seven days. Technically, we'll have some 60s tomorrow, mainly in the morning while we're getting some of those downpours, wrapping things up. I think tomorrow afternoon does look dry. We may get a couple breaks of sun as well. And then the ice threats come in. Northwest, this is really uh, your guys' event from Wednesday through Thursday, watch out for that freezing rain potential. Things are gonna get slick. And if we can get closer to that half inch of ice, that's when you start talking more about power outages. This is not gonna be the 2009 storm, but we are talking about slick conditions. That's why we've got a weather alert for both Wednesday and Thursday. We dry things out Friday. There's a quick little system coming in Saturday morning before we get to the 40s that could give us a stray flurry. Not a big deal. That's the fourth, technically the fourth storm that's coming just this week as we wrap up. This is all of February. Monday, that Monday is the last day of February, the 28th. In the River Valley, rain will come to an end. Storms will come to an end by tomorrow morning, and then we should be dry later in the afternoon, hopefully getting a couple breaks for sun. And then we're not talking about any sun for Wednesday and Thursday as that very cold rain moves in. Some of us may try to get a little bit of ice, especially on elevated surfaces, but it may not be as slick in the River Valley. That's good news as we're trying to figure out what's all going on with this storm. All right, I'm going to pull the computer out, be able to look at some of your guys' questions. I hope you guys had a good weekend. My goodness, it was beautiful. Area wide, we had the sun. We had a beautiful sunset last night as those high clouds were starting to roll on through. I'm going to back up. Here's this forecast. Um, let me s actually let's go back to the top. I forgot to put one thing in. We talked about it at the beginning, but I, I wanted to go a little bit deeper into it, and that's the ice accumulation map. One more. There we go. The heaviest ice coming in Wednesday, Thursday, here in that darker purple bullseye going in from about Lake Eufaula right towards Lake Tenkiller, coming into western Sequoia County and into northwest Arkansas. That's where some of us could get a half inch of ice. That's a decent amount. Remember, an inch and a half was what we got to in 2009. But a good amount of ice coming in from Bella Vista south into Greenland and West Fork, heavy ice coming into the mountains and then into north central Arkansas too. But let me zoom this in. We could take a look just at Northwest Arkansas. We made a look across the map just in case you guys are traveling. You're headed out and about Wednesday and Thursday. Just know that the worst is going to be in Northwest. The farther south you live, the better the day will be. Just a cold rain. That half inch of ice possible for Washington County, Madison County, Carroll County, most of Benton County. You go farther north, we may actually get more sleet. That's a good thing. Sleet bounces. Ice just freezes. It flash freezes and it glazes. But a little bit less ice the farther north and west you go. And then less ice the farther south you go too. 
for parts of Sequoia County, Crawford County, Northern Franklin County, Northern Johnson County. We could try to get a quarter inch of ice. That's hectic, that's hazardous, but it's nothing uh, no, too crazy. We usually don't get too many power outages with 0.25. Now down to 0.1 inch, just a tenth of an inch of ice. That's just a slick glaze, mainly on, on elevated surfaces, your mailbox, your car. Uh, there could be a few bridges and overpasses, but it's usually not too bad. And then just a trace of ice here in the light pink, anywhere from about Poto. Poto, we're kind of in between maybe a tenth of an inch of ice to just a trace. You know, the computer's blocking it. TR says trace. Uh, but then Greenwood, east about Boonville, Paris, south of Clarksville, maybe a trace of an inch of ice. We'll see if these bands shift over time, but for now it does look like the farther north you live, the more ice we're going to get. Pulling up your guys' comments. All right, Michelle says it's 64 in Bentonville. Isn't that crazy? That's one question. Darren and Erica, I'll be honest, they, they came in this afternoon, they're asking, Matt, we are in the 60s, some 70s right now. How are we gonna get ice? Well, we'll be warm tonight. We've got rumbles of thunder, right? And then by tomorrow afternoon, we're not gonna warm up all that much. In fact, we may just be in the 30s and 40s area wide. So that counts, that helps cool the ground once again. It'll be cold going into Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. You've got several hours for temperatures to drop. And then when the storm comes in Wednesday afternoon, we'll probably have 20s where we've got the greatest ice threat. We'll have mid 30s in the river valley where the ice threats are a little bit lower. That's enough time to keep things cold. And so it's crazy how it's so warm right now. We had such a nice weekend and how quickly things can change. Uh, let's see. Ricky says, wants more snow that we can play with. I wish we had more snow in this forecast. I'd rather had snow, you, five, six inches of snow is better than this but it's gonna get slick. There could be some snow mainly north into Missouri, but here in Arkansas, the chances are really low other than a couple flurries. Michael asks, are we having tornadoes tonight? Of course, the, the threat here is here. There's rotation in the atmosphere, but there's a couple problems. I, we can dive into it a little bit. We're on Facebook Live. There's a lot of times we can't, we don't have time to talk about it in the newscast, uh, but a few things. We've got now new severe thunderstorm warning just north and west of the Dallas metro area. But the tornado threat is a little bit low because as these storms push into the night hours that we're getting, there's still a little bit of sunlight in western Texas right now, but as they push here into the dark skies of Arkansas and Oklahoma, there's just not a lot of energy left here uh, at the ground. Uh, so what's gonna happen is these storms start to elevate. In fact, they, they kind of lift off the ground a little bit. So when you elevate these storms, if you do get a, a tornado to start to wrap up, it's got a longer way of trying to even reach down. So storms a little bit more elevated later tonight, that reduces your tornado threat, but there's still a lot of rotation. We're also noticing high up in the atmosphere, there is such a strong southwesterly wind. You know what that is? That's that jet stream high up into the air, there's this jet stream really flowing at a crazy pace. And what that's going to do is gonna tilt these storms a little bit more, and it may actually push some of the rain out before the even tornadic circulation would form. You're almost raining out your own thunderstorm. You know how like when we get storms, at first they're the most intense, and then when it rains for a while, the severe threat starts to go down. Well, there's so much water in the atmosphere, and with that strong jet level wind, it's producing a lot of this rain. Notice how we've got a severe thunderstorm warning back here, but the heavy rain is kind of cutting it off. Now this one may move eastbound, and if it's able to move east into some clearer air, that storm will survive. But I'll tell you what, there's just a lot of rain being blown out of these thunderstorms before they're even able to really get going. So that's good, that's good, just heavy rain, but we'll have to see. Uh, Jessica says, sounds you like you will be good on Friday. I think that might've been to a comment about not to travel to the children's hospital Friday. I think that's from LaDonna. Uh, great question. I've had my own family. They ask me, they've got appointments too, right? Anywhere from health appointments to veterinarian appointments. Uh, I went ahead and I have told them, you may want to think about, especially my family in Northwest Arkansas, you got to start to reschedule. Told my River Valley family, may not have to. Uh, if you want to just to be safe, might be a good idea. But that's, of course, totally up to you guys. I'm just telling you what I've told my family. Uh, let's see, but Friday, we're, we're good. Now there could be some slick spots still northwest. If there's, if there's a half inch of ice, it's gonna take a little bit of time. It could take a day or two to really melt that down, but we will start to, to warm things up. Not quickly, but we will get above freezing as we go into the weekend. Let's see, Ricky says, yes, no, not this time. Yes, the snow would be better. Ella says in 2009, nine days, no electricity. That's a long time. We are not talking about that with this storm. Thank goodness, right? But 
in Northwest, there could be one to two days of scattered power outages. But in the River Valley, there could be some isolated power outages, especially along I-40 and north. And then into eastern Oklahoma, for some of us in LaFleur County, especially near Cavanaugh Hill and west towards Bacoche, and then in Sequoia County from Salisaw west of Vianne and Weber's Falls, there could be some ice threats and some power outages. But the farther north you live towards the mountains, the higher those electric chances of going out will be. Natasha says crackers are sold out too. Go, get, go ahead and get your snacks. Uh, Hackett, we were with that day without power for 10 days. That's a long time. Good thing that's not going to be the case with this storm. Of course, we'll let you know of any kind of details that are changing, but our best guess right now is just going to keep that ice, that half inch, uh, here in the dark purple color from eastern Oklahoma right into northwest. We got two inches of ice in both of those storms, 2000 and 2009. Ice totals are not quite that high yet. Uh, we'll let you know if that changes. David says, I've got a flight out of XNA at 6 on Thursday evening. Of course, I can't speak on XNA's behalf. We're going to be talking with XNA. We're reaching out. Uh, their, uh, their public information officer, Alex English, we've talked with her, but we'll continue to talk with her. Uh, with the past storm where we got a lot of snow, there were some cancellations kind of coming in and out. Of course, there's several other factors that, that go with that, but just be on the lookout. Uh, there could be some delays and cancellations, of course, at XNA. I think they're going to be worse at XNA than they are going to be in Fort Smith. But there could be. If you do have a flight Wednesday, anywhere from Wednesday afternoon through Thursday, it may be tough. So just maybe check with your airline, see what they're maybe thinking here at the moment. Janice says, no sound. I hope there's been sound. Well, I've been talking for a long time. Okay, some people say this sound. That's good. All right, Anthony says, my sinuses really can't take much more of this. I got so many swings. This February has not been nice. Last February has not been nice, right? It was not nice at all. And then uh, a lot of these Februarys have been tough. It seems like February is now kind of our winter month. We've noticed that the past several years. Now from 1981 to 2010, our snowiest, iciest months have usually been just January and then some into February, but January usually has been the month, but we've noticed the past decade, it's kind of pushed into February. Once we get more studies, the meteorological community, the scientists who all they do is studies, we'll probably see some data. My, my best guess would be in that direction, how it just been, it takes longer for the Arctic to really cool off in December. That's going to reduce white Christmas chances, but then increase chances for snow and ice in February. So it's kind of delaying winter, kind of squeezes it down towards the end of the season once it's finally cold enough. Jeremy says, Matt, what most people, what most people don't realize is that the models don't handle that 32 degree line. The cold air honestly could get here faster than the models are predicting. That is possible. Sometimes the cold air moves slower than these models. So we've really taken kind of an average with a lot of the data. It just depends on how uh, far south that cold air is. And the layer of cold air coming in with this is right next to the ground. It is very shallow. We're only talking about a couple hundred feet. And so if you can nudge that past the mountains, then yeah, we've got higher ice chances in the River Valley. But for now, it's having a hard time, at least with the data that we're looking at, as having a hard time pushing through all the mountains, all the nooks and crannies in the ravines and really getting towards Van Buren and Fort Smith. If that cold air starts to be a little bit deeper, not so shallow, then you're talking about you know just a bigger force and maybe we'll be able to break through. Models are just a computer simulation, taking a look at numbers. Here is our best guess though, and we'll continue to keep you up to date, especially as soon as, I, I know this is kind of cheating, right? But when we're able to see that ice rain line come in towards Lake Eufaula and see where that is and we can kind of track it north and east, we'll have a great idea. That's just how ice storms are. There's just no way to really have a complete handle on it several days out. Here are our best guesses, but we really start to fine tune things right before the event happens. Sometimes, of course, that's kind of late, but a couple hours of leeway is a little bit better. Michael asks, thanks for answering, Matt. A little confused. Uh, by some info. Uh, let's see. April says she has to travel to Lowell in the morning. I'm not sure exactly in the morning. Tomorrow morning, watch out for some rain. I think the heaviest rain will be overnight before the sun comes up. Paige asks, what's travel like going to be to Dallas? Uh, let's see. Friday night, I think you're okay. Now, if you're coming from northwest, it probably could be still slick on I-49 and US-71 going through the mountains. But if you're leaving from Van Buren, Fort Smith, Paris, you know, southbound, we may be okay. And Dallas should be okay. They're about to get a good thunderstorm, though, coming into the Dallas metro. 
Jeremy says, don't let your, your guard down. Things haven't changed. Tornado threat may be low, but still there. Yep, we're going to keep our eye on it all night. We're not going to sleep. It's one of those nights. I'll tell you what, uh, Garrett Lewis, one thing he always said, he always said, never trust a May storm. And then we use that phrase for kind of, you know, February, March, April, and May. All these late winter months and early spring months, there's always rotation. It just depends if we can tap into that. And so a lot of times you can tap into it temporarily, just how the atmosphere works. It can be very quick and then it's gone again. That's what storms are like. Now, once we get storms closer to June, they don't always rotate. And so they're kind of easier. They're just windy and sometimes hail. Hail's no fun. Hail's a lot of damage. Uh, but that's kind of the inside forecast. So that's something that we always, we always remember. Gary always said, never trust a May storm. I'd say don't, never trust a February storm either. But uh, of course, we're getting into severe weather season. That's just how things roll. You don't have to live here long to, to realize. Now, we're going to have a severe weather special next week. A lot of things going on in the weather department in the next couple of days, but we'll be, we'll be watching. Uh, let's see. April says she's moving. She's traveling from Fort Smith to Lowell in the morning. If you're going from Fort Smith and to Lowell in the morning tomorrow, there could still be some rain, 6, 7, 8 o'clock. Sometimes kind of heavy, but by about 8 o'clock, it's just probably going to be pretty light. Uh, we're still watching those heavy downpours towards our west. Hail, it uh, looks like hail and lightning cores are really picking up here in north Texas. This line, though, is probably going to continue to march east. I mean, it could get towards, oh, Mina. We'll have to see just north of Texarkana, somewhere in here. But I think this storm, as it's already moving eastbound, should stay away from Fort Smith and northwest Arkansas. Just heavy, good downpours coming in right now to Oklahoma. Uh, let's see. Juan says, I'll need snow in the summer, won't we all? Help cool us down. Well, I hope you guys have had a good Monday so far. Weather's active tonight. Watch out for some heavy rain, good downpours, maybe a few lightning strikes too. Severe threats are there, but they are low. That's good for us, but we'll keep our eye out. If you have the 5 News app, you're going to get pushes throughout the evening to let you know what you can expect. Um, you'll get go ahead and get updates and alerts. If there's a severe thunderstorm warning, I'll come right to your phone. And then we'll, of course, live stream. We'll live stream if we get severe thunderstorms or even tornado warnings. Chance is low, but not zero. We'll be live on YouTube, on Facebook, and then on our app. If you just go to the app, go to watch. If we are live right then and there, it'll pop up on the app, and you'll be good to go. But a lot of things happening this week. Of course, we've got a few thunderstorms coming in tonight, and then we've got the ice threat later this week, mainly for eastern Oklahoma and parts of northern Arkansas, especially in northwest Arkansas, Fayetteville, north of Bentonville. Be on the lookout for some ice. All right, you guys take care. We're going to have our 5 News at 10 here in, what, just about two hours. We'll have more updates there. I'll let you know if we fine-tune some of the data. But make sure you keep it here, keep it local, and, of course, we'll keep you advised. We'll see you guys soon.